time or ice cream and a new video. Hello everyone, how are we? Today I will talk about interface management. Interface management is something that is not given proper attention at the beginning of a project in many situations and it costs the project dearly as far as 20% of total cost overrun accounts for interface issues. Often large modular projects struggle to achieve its performance in terms of cost and schedule, mainly due to interface dependencies. It involves in this type of projects multiple engineering consultants, contractors. It has multiple construction contractors and often has interface with operations. In all three segments, it is struggle because it is not given the proper attention and planning at the beginning of the project. In this video, what I will do, I will segment this video in three phases. First segment is engineering design interface management. Second segment is to manage interface during construction execution in the field. And the third segment will deal with how you should go about and manage interfaces in case you are in brownfield operating environment with operations. I'm excited, so let's get going. Okay, so before I start taking you through the interface management process in terms of project phases, such as engineering and design, construction and operation, I think it would be better if I give you a quick definition of what is interface management in case you are someone who is, uh, this is the first time you are hearing about interface management. So let's assume you have to go from city of Calgary to city of X, Y, and Z, a new city. You've never been to this city, you don't know how to get there, you don't have phone, mobile or other electronic media. Let's say there is a natural calamity and you do not have access to anything else. However, you met, uh, there's a buddy of yours, you know you can meet and he's going to give you this map with uh, using that you are going to reach this new destination. This exchange of information at the right time by the right persons at the right format is interface management. Think about from this angle, what could go wrong if you do not have that map from your body at that moment, at that time, in, in that city, you will not be able to reach your destination according to your plan. That would mean delay, most likely cost increase and delay for your project completion, which is not a good thing for any project manager, construction manager or whatever your position is right now. So now that we have established this a simple example that interface management is exchange of information in the most efficient way in a timely manner by the right people in the right format. This allows project to be successfully completed on time and on budget. So now it's time to move into the segment on engineering and design phase and how and where we should focus our attention during that phase. So let's talk about engineering phase and how to manage interfaces during engineering phase. I'll talk about first some of the focus areas that you should uh, really focus on during in this phase. The next thing that I will talk about is some of the tools and applications that you may want to utilize in order to make sure that engineering phase interfaces are managed properly. The first thing that you want to focus on is establish the right coordinate system. And when I, when I say coordinate system, it's your civil ground grid coordinate system. Is it UTM? Is it something else? Do you have your own project coordinate in uh, setup already? Uh, if you are not familiar with coordinate system, please touch base with your civil guys unless, unless you are civil yourself so that you really understand which coordinate system to stick to. And once you establish that, that this is the coordinate system for your project, 
stick with that. Make sure that everybody knows in your project environment in terms of whoever is your engineering designer. You may have most likely more than one. In today's environment, it is highly likely that you will have, unless you are just installing a quick uh, vessel or a pump or uh, changing out a valve, most more than likely that you will have multiple parties involved, especially you may have a party who is doing your overall design and the others who are providing specialized vendor equipments and packages. These packages could be as simple as a pump, compressor, or it can be as complicated as a GTG gas turbine generator, steam turbine, or a blending skid and other packages. The second thing that you should focus on is set up timeline and establish a table-like template so that you can exchange process information. And when I say process information, this is your temperature, pressure, density, whatever is required for your processing plant. Make sure that it is not left for ambiguity or up for uh, discussion. You have to establish this template at the front end. This ensures that the right information at the, in the right format is exchanged, even using the right units of measurement. You do not want foot per second and meter per second comes together and then creates a big ambiguous situation during fabrication and construction. That can be very costly. The third thing that you want to focus on is cost-effective solution to pipe stress analysis as well as anchor locations. Establish who will be responsible for isolation valve assembly and do you need double block and bleed? Who is responsible for this in a battery limit from a physical battery limit point of view? Piping, plant layout, roads, main power cable, routing require special attention. There are a few things that you will notice that crosses both physical as well as engineering design boundaries. Two examples comes to my mind. Number one is the stormwater system. You need to know how the stormwater system for a big physical project comes together and work with each other. A good water management plan is required for operations during operations phase. The second thing that comes to my mind is the telecom and communications network. Make sure you establish the right protocols to exchange the right information by the right person, people at the right time so that your project is successful. It is highly likely in today's environment of globalization that your engineering contractor may well be sitting in their office in New Delhi or some other countries like Beijing or uh, maybe in Philippines. It is important that these folks know exactly the standards, the specs that they have to adhere to. It is also very likely that these folks are also working maybe one of your competitor uh, and designing plans for them. So make sure that when they're designing, they're following actually your standard and not your competitor's specs. So now that we have established some of the focus areas, it is important to now touch on what tools you may want to use in order to ensure good interface management and as a result, better performance for your project. Interface management only has very simple tools. And that's the good part about it. If you have more than one party who are involved in design phase for your project, you need to ensure that each party has the schedule of the others so that they can understand the interdependency and the interdependent nature of the deliverables that they are producing. You also need to establish an interface register, the items that needs focus, and also identify the ones that requires formal interface agreements between two or maybe among three or more parties. Once you have done these two, now it's time to put the effort in once you establish your register, once everybody understands the interdependent nature of the deliverable, then you have to, on a periodic, regular basis, you have to ensure the parties come together and they provide the feedback and update as to where they are for their deliverable. 
on the interdependent input that they need from each other. By ensuring the right party, right level, right time at the right moment in the right format, they provide the, those feedbacks to each other. We can ensure success and you can ensure success for your project.